This video lays out the basics of arch gauge modeling. Now arch stands for autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. The term gauge stands for generalized arch. So let's start with the basic return decomposition of realized returns into the expected and the unexpected part. From now on, we call the parameterization of the expected part mu t minus one to be the mean equation. The task of the mean equation is to capture autocorrelation in realized returns. In most cases, returns are only weakly serially correlated, if at all. So a simple armor PQ parameterization does the job of removing any type of correlation. Now, sometimes investors also add so-called X factors, such as the dividend yield or any other additional risk premium factor that appears to be useful in predicting returns. So the resulting ARMA X PQK mean equation looks as follows. Now, once the mean equation has removed all serial dependence in the realized return RT, we continue to specify the variance equation. For that, we square the realized unexpected return innovations epsilon t and ask whether there is serial correlation in epsilon t squared. If there is evidence for that, then there is the need to account for a time varying variance in epsilon t. Now let's check why that is the case. Well, we think about unexpected return innovations epsilon t to be the product of two components. One is the volatility sigma t minus one and the other one is the fundamental return shock eta. Now the time indices highlight the point in time when each variable becomes known to the investor. So the volatility is known at the beginning of a period while the innovation is realized only at the end of the period. Moreover, econometricians treat eta E as a white noise process, meaning it is IID with a mean zero and variance one. Now, if you square epsilon T, you end up with epsilon T square equals sigma square T minus one times eta square T. Now, if you take the expectation on both sides, you see that the average epsilon t square should coincide with sigma square t minus one. And therefore, if you observe serial correlation in epsilon t square, that is an indication that the variance of the return shock exhibits autocorrelation. Now, different arch and gauge models do assume a slightly different parametric structure for sigma square t minus one. While arch models assume the variance to be a deterministic function of past unexpected return innovations, gauge models assume in addition that today's variance does also depend on the level of previous variance. Got feedback? We would love to hear it. Please drop us a line. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.